one. It's uh, been a while since I've done this. Um, hopefully I'm still in shape or whatever. Uh, last time we helped the Spaffy get the homeworld back from some really pathetic uh, rodent thing. And yes, that's pretty much it. Um, just before get on too far, I just want to mention that I uh, gained 5 subscribers since the uh, last video. Big shout out to those people, and I have no idea what you're planning, but uh, I got my eye on you. Anyways, uh, we're at plot threads, pretty much. The Ilrath still have to go to the Third Ash before we can get to the Alpha Helix and fix the Ultron and happy love hugs, yada yada. The Pukunk? Since the Ilrath are no longer attacking them, they're starting to move towards the Yeha, so hopefully they'll be able to wrap that up soon. Uh, they're taking a really long time to get there though, so maybe in a couple more videos, we'll see. Let's see if the Charm need their um, process, they need their process sped up, but um, no freaking clue how I'm supposed to do that. Hopefully it'll be... Hopefully all the time with one of the other plot threads, but, uh... Because otherwise, it's pretty much just looking around for a plot device, I guess. Uh, what else could it be? We've met pretty much every alien. We've... Yeah, we've met every, pretty much every alien that we can meet. There might be something here and there, but... It's gotta fit in somehow. Um, what else do I want to ramble about? Yeah, so right now we're just going to go look for the Micon eggshell, something like that. It's, uh, it'll convince the Siren that the Micons destroyed their home planet, so we'll, uh, get their help, hopefully. I already know, I've, uh, played a bit ahead, so I know what happens, and it is freaking annoying. But that's for a later video. For now, we're just gonna be, uh, wandering around. The Micons, in between Star Control 1 and 2, at least according to the uh, map that came with the game, they expanded their territory, like doubled in size. So we're just going to be hitting their core systems, I guess you call it, to see if uh, they have any worlds left. And if not, we'll check some of the newer ones. <sighs> the Elrath takes them a while to get there, but uh, Ooh, this looks promising. So, what to ramble, what to ramble about? Yes, this is going to be a very rambling video. Not really anything to say. We're just hunting. We're gathering minerals, we're shooting stuff. It's pretty standard fare. No plot twists or surprises. So, just uh, us being badass and decimating the local wildlife population. Oh, Star Control 3. Right, uh, apparently you can buy it on good old games for cheap, but uh, I don't want to mess around with the internet stuff. If I wanted to mess around with buying stuff on the internet, I would be doing this thing with fraps already, so uh, uh, I guess it's still an option though, but um, there's alternatives to getting it. Um, I kind of want to play it. Not gonna lie. I mean, the Star Control 2 parts do not interest me at all. They just sound forced and cheesy to what I've seen slash heard. But uh, the new aliens, I am old for them. They look... well, they're, they're new. <laughs> That's pretty much the alert. They're new aliens to talk with. I like talking with aliens. It's pretty fun. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the entire reason why I play Star Control 3, just to meet new aliens and fight them, because I'm pretty sure they're all evil, but nothing we can do about that. Well, most of them are evil. Some of them are just neutral evil. <laughs> uh, which is to say, they're not part of the big bad, but they're still not friendly. I think some of them might be friendly. I've not checked very well, which is good if I'm going to do a blind like this thing. 
I will be doing blind with this, this thing if I do it. But, um, as an alternative, as an alternative to Star Control 3, the, uh, we could go back in time, instead of forward. And, uh, there's a bunch of games, a series of games, well, two games, called Starflight. Very original name, I'm sure you'll agree. But, uh, from what I can tell, it's pretty much a game in the same vein as Star Control 2. It's exploring around aliens and uh, mining. Gotta have those lanyard segments. Uh, yes, there's ancient artifacts, there's alien races, puzzles to solve, crimes to solve, whodunits. Um, but as well, it's older than Star Control. I just put it that way. Uh, it's for DOS. But that's not a problem. The um, game is abandonware, so if we're lucky... No, we are lucky, because I was researching it, and apparently there's a website where you can uh, get it for free. Vaguely illegal, so I'm not going to really talk about that too much, but... Uh, that's... It's probably... It's probably what I'll do. I'm going to uh, look around, see... See if I can get working on Dr. Box, and uh, if it works, then it works, and we'll have some fun. So, um, it's a bit different from Star Control 2, obviously. Much smaller screen. Uh, why don't you were playing the Iroquois Masters, so the screen is not that much smaller. It's like, it was made, well, it was originally made for, like, the Amigas, or, no, it was, <sighs> I remember reading it. There was the Amiga version that they designed for like one or something. I forget exactly. And it works perfectly. It has like a weird resolution, like 160 by 200, something like that. So when they bumped it up to 320 by 200, whatever, they kept the like fonts and like UI, yes, user interface, and all that. They kept it the same, they just stretched it, which, um, like, really stretched it. No, no, not really stretched it, it's not that noticeable, but they basically just stretched it to save my memory, uh, but they, I have no idea where I was going with that, as far as I'm by. So they stretched it, and it works if you, perfectly fine if you reduce this image size down to, uh, no, it's perfectly readable if you reduce the image size down to the original 160 by 200 resolution, but, the Alien Race's pictures will look a bit odd, because I'm pretty sure they were redesigned to the uh, higher display, more detail and whatnot, but uh, I think that was cool. <laughs> and plus that wasted like three minutes of me in one play. So hey, Micron. Definitely did not expect them in here. Hopefully uh, this will be something good. Oh, it's, um, right out of safe zone. I guess this must be their home world, I guess? Don't know what else it could be. Yeah, Jeffawop. I thought Jeffawop was all from whatever. We are the agents of Jeffawop. We are the guys. I have chosen I imagine that a lot of their whole uh, compensation options just give you a non secure, so let's start from the beginning and learn about their genetic memories. That's nifty. The bits of a million lifetimes coalesced into a birth gift of complete awareness. Or well, uh, yeah, we kill a lot of stupid ships. Uh, well, time we wishing that we got more time to uh, talk with them, but eh, probably wouldn't have been very helpful. Let's just escape and continue looking for that bloody eggshell. I don't even 
even like eggs. Or can't even eat eggs. But uh, here I am, looking for them. Whatever. <sighs> and we are off. Well, that was fun. Not really, but let's plunder the moons just to rub it in. That was a quasi-degenerate world. <sighs> what if I had exotic minerals? Stupid fun. Yeah, it's... We got... Well, we're not too far from finding the eggshell. But we got a few more lander segments. So more time for me to ramble. I don't know what to ramble about. <laughs> First time, well... Let's bat the... Oh, we're meeting with these guys again? Yes, you are the Micron. We I am the Walrus. The In the dark they grow. The deep fire feeds the children. Their birth breathes yeah, we know about this. across a cold world. Violent action, sure, but uh, I'm afraid that the only one who's gonna get violent here is Lolilu. Lolilu? How do you pronounce that? Oh, the Ivory Loom! I remember, yes. They, um... Anybody else find it suspicious that, uh, the Ivory Loom conveniently found the crashed Earth 1 Dreadnought on Alpha Revolvus, or however that place was called? You know, the one with, you know, the circuits disabled so it didn't blow up, you know, um, found by the Ivory Loom have the ability to teleport onto spaceships or something like that what, at will and you know ability to go pretty much unseen yeah that's not suspicious at all on that they gave us the cryptic message about enemy of my enemy is my friend and then oh hey there's the talking pet which was given sentience by doom gao because the Umgao are the freaking Umgao and do stuff like that every day. And the point I'm trying to get is that it all, that section of the game seems kind of engineered a bit. I wouldn't put it past, well, it could be a coincidence. It could not be a coincidence. I don't think it is a coincidence. I feel like the Arilu have uh, pretty much engineered that way. Well, the way I see it, they're higher dimensional beings with god knows what powers, so they must have a vague idea of how to stop the Urquan. But of course, they're not going to stop the Urquan for whatever bloody reason. Probably because they're the Ariadu and they are jerks. Or maybe they want, or maybe they're stepping in the last minute or something. I'm not sure. Or maybe they couldn't. Destroy the uh, Earth Quant and have Earth Sabatra. What am I saying? Sabatra. Inability to destroy it or not enough force or something, but hey, there's this groupy dude called Zelnik going around. Or the first song he go around. Well, they've been watching us for some time, right? So they knew going to try to stop the Earth Quant, so obviously they would know about the old League Bomb because they're the Ariel and know everything. They're the Illuminati of uh, Star Control 2. So they kind of foresaw that we would help that or whatever, or... Or whatever, but... Um, obviously we would need to get close to use the bomb. So, we need a distraction. And uh, obviously, what better distraction than a freaking sentient talking pet, which will pretty much draw every Urquan, or not draw, drive every Urquan insane, something like that. So they engineered the crash landing, and uh, I guess they no, they handed off. I'm pretty sure they might have the technology to make them sentient, but. Uh, they decided not to do it on their home planet in case, you know, the Drenari overpowered them. Plus, let's face it, the Umgao are expendable. At least I think they're expendable, but uh, you all know my thoughts on them. And uh, hey, we have found a eggshell. That's... fruity. 
Yep. Gamma. They're incredibly tough. Hate resist stuff that. My cons come from eggs. Good to know. We have a Micon over easy eventually. Next time we meet them, we'll have a Micon over easy. Micon sunny side up. Both sound delicious. And by delicious, I mean horrible, terrible. You're all little human beings. Yada yada yada.